I will call back to order. Would the uh, clerk please call the roll and establish quorum? Thank you. Matt Conant. Nick Avgis. Here. Tom Barandis. Here. Brian Holloway. Here. Cyril Shaw. Here. Angelique Ashby. Jeff Harris. Rick Jennings. Here. Matt Hedges. Here. Don Natoli. Susan Peters. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Here. Phil Cernan. Here. Do you have a quorum? Thank you. We yes. have a report out on closed session government code section 54956.8, conference with real property negotiators regarding APN 2740670-022. Yes, the board unanimously approved accepting Sonic Garden Grove LLC's most recent counteroffer, authorizing the executive director to execute a purchase and sale agreement and uh, perform any other next actions necessary. The details of the transaction will be available to the public when it's reduced to writing. Thank you. And I do not have any comments. You do not have any comments. I have no comment cards. Anybody in the, in the audience like to make a comment? Thank you. Next up is the executive director's report for March 16th, 2017. Before you start, Mr. Johnson, I wanted to also uh, welcome uh, Matt Hedges here today. This is his first, I believe, SAFCO meeting. And, oh, and uh, wel welcome to uh, uh, what is always an exciting process. <laughs> well, now I feel pressured. I yeah, can put him to sleep there. So, <laughs> so um, good afternoon. Just. Um, wanted to hit a few items. Um, I was asked earlier if I could put together some bullet points for the board members to use when asked about what the status is in Natomas. And so uh, the next couple of slides we made a copy I put on the lectern there. But just kind of walking through them real quickly, the Corps ha has started their bid process. They did award the contract. There was a protest. Um, once they get into the protest, as we talked about last time, it does involve other federal agencies and starts the federal process. So the Corps is uh, going through that process right now. At this point in time, it's not known for sure when we'll get to construction. Ideally, if everything went perfectly, I think the Corps would hope they could get out into the field in September or October. But, um, Knowing how the federal process usually goes, I, 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 nothing ever goes very perfectly. So it very, we very easily may not get to, out into the field until um, next year. And then um, the court does have a couple of other contracts that are ready to go forward with the advertising and the um, process to award a construction contract for 2018 if funding were available. Um, as you know, we're about five and a half months into the federal fiscal year. The continuing resolution that Congress passed earlier expires April 29th. They're working on a number of, of bills, whether they be, they're looking at either omnibus where they're putting them all together or a, a series of, of smaller bills to do the 12 appropriation acts that they have to do. So we're going to see uh, whether or not um, once the, the 17 appropriations bills finally get passed, uh, if there's additional funding in there for those other contracts. Um, and then also the core did, did give us contacts uh, that I put on the bottom there. So um, just that's the, the information we have generally right now on, on that. OK, changing gears a little bit. Um, over to the state on February 17th, Senator uh, Pan introduced legislation uh, SB 580 on our behalf. So remember last December, uh, the federal level, uh, they authorized our uh, general reevaluation report at the federal level, which included uh, widening the Sacramento Weir and bypass and then um, levee work in the down in the pocket area up in the north area and then erosion control uh, work Th what this legislation does is it takes the authorized um, safeco projects at the state level and and adds that authorization as a state authorization so this is important as we go forward seeking state funds that we we do have a state authorized project also so we'd like to thank senator pan for for carrying that for us Okay, earlier today, uh, the president released what he called his uh, proposed budget 
uh, blueprint for FY 2018. It, it's, it was a high level, it only had grand totals, it didn't have the specific projects. We won't see that until about the May timeframe. Um, the total in there for the Corps of Engineers is $5 billion. Um, to put it in perspective, the uh, 17 presence proposed budget had $4.6 billion in. Now, really, it's just a comparison because the presence 17 proposed budget never got acted on. The continuing resolution was based on $16, and then the Senate and the House have put together our water and energy appropriations bill for 17 that is kind of hung up with some of the other ones. They have $6 billion in for the Corps of Engineers uh, for, for 17. So um, that's what the Corps has been planning their their program for this year on. So the, the $5 billion in the 18 proposed budget is a about a 16% reduction from from what the core will have in 17. So it, you can kind of see the challenges we're going to have moving forward as we try to compete for um, some of the federal dollars there. Okay, I wanted to, to change. Director Cern, oh, I yeah, has a sure. question. Yeah. Now, um, all of us have been kind of re reading the media reports about the uh, administration's proposed you know, high altitude budget. A lot of what we're reading, there's uh, frequent mention of uh, a later infrastructure package um, that has been used as a, um, uh, a placeholder uh, for a lot of things, it seems. Do you see that um, being a placeholder for any uh, of the CORE's activities, or is that going to be much more distinct as a line item? Um, <clears throat> issue from what we've seen so far on the proposed infrastructure package they're they're trying to uh, minimize any federal cost and have it paid for primarily through private sector by um, incentivizing uh, private investment so the problem we're, we're trying to figure out how we can fit in is we don't really have a product for flood, you know, like they're talking toll roads, they're talking tax incentives for federal credits for energy, you know, things like water where you can recover costs. So we're, we're going to have to see what those details are on the surface. It's, a, it's, it's, I'm not, we're not seeing a real good connection at this point, but again, the devil's always in the details on, on those. But I assume that you have been talking with our, um, our lobbyists back in DC about that very issue and how best to at least begin a conversation about the the general opportunity of um, you know some kind of a match or I mean we certainly have plenty of history uh, with uh, local governmental um, contribution and, and tax dollars uh, that are derived locally or uh, statewide but um, uh, it's something that uh, I wanted to make mention of here today because it's it's come up in a number of conversations already today as it relates to transportation and other other uh, infrastructure financing uh, yeah, no, that's that's an absolute good point, and it does go a long way back there. We can show how much money we're we've advanced, put forward on that. So absolutely, yeah, we're we're going to continue that Great. messaging. Thank there. you. Okay, thank you. Oops. So, uh, just wanted to to talk a little bit about um, levy slope stability. We've talked a lot about seepage. Uh, putting in slurry walls to cut the seepage off and everything. But the storms the last couple of months have, um, again, emphasized another component of our projects. And, and it's included in the projects, but I, I haven't really talked much about it. So I just wanted to touch on it a little bit. And that's the levee slope stability. This particular picture, you, you can see the, the this is down at the lower end of the yellow bypass system. This is the land side levee. Uh, it's a slope failure there. And I, I do want to I put this picture up because we're all aware Highway 50 every time we get a big storm like this last month that was closed for several days. Old highway, the very steep cuts on the, the not very sound material, when it gets wet, it slides down. And the same thing occurs with um, 
levee slopes. This this is actually here in Sacramento County. Um, Tyler Island, the county had to issue an evacuation warning for the island. This is a, a levee slope stability failure from the same reason. You got bad material, too steep of a levee slope, and um, the, the levee tends to slide. So ideally, we'd all like to live behind brand new levees that are built with modern equipment and modern techniques. Um, this is a, a graphic we uh, uh, Dan Tibbetts used at executive committee. I, I borrowed from him. Kind of shows what ideally we'd like: a good foundation, good material, um, slopes that are are stable. Unfortunately, these pictures are, are actual pictures from the construction of our, our levee system in the Sacramento River. Um, dredging, um, either whether it's suction dredge or clamshell dredging. The material ended up um, mostly sandy silt. Um, often very steep slopes. We've gone in and put slurry walls in to try to cut off the seepage, but the problem on the levee stability is on the water side, the rivers still saturate the, the slopes, and once they're wet, if they're not good material or too steep, they tend to slide. And then on the water side, when we have situations like we had the last couple of months where we just they've got soaked with all the rain and we saw a couple of dozen that I'm aware of uh, levee slides in the system up and down the, the system here so to fix it here ideally you'd like to build a new levee but where we live with all the homes right there the um, most practical way to address it is to flatten the slope bringing in some new material and and laying the slope out so um, you'll hear sometimes the terms as we move forward with the projects that we're doing slope flattening that uh, that's what it's referring to we're trying to get the the slopes of the levees to a position where they're not going to fail when they get wet and we we certainly can't afford to have something like this happen in the Thomas or in the pocket or, or in any of the other areas around Sacramento so I just I talk a lot about seepage I the, the last storms kind of we had a lot of these type of failures so I just wanted to to mention that that's also part of these projects that, as we move forward and then finally um, chair um, Kennedy and vice chair uh, Advis and uh, myself and Jason will be the first week in April back for our advocacy trip. And we'll be traveling, uh, Jason and I will be traveling back on that Thursday. So we won't be here for that committee. So we're going to cancel that. So just making you aware. So I'll take any questions with that. Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Consent matters, items one through eight are in order. Two through eight. Move consent. <clears throat> Moved by uh, or Vice Chair Abdus, second by, I believe, Director Jennings. Oh, well, that was good, huh? My ears are a little plugged up. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay. Thank you. Item eight, I'm, excuse me, item nine, resolution number 2017027, delegating authority to the executive director to award the contract for the North Area Streams Levy Improvement Project, contract number 4355, Sacramento County, California, to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, authorizing the executive director to execute the contract and approving an appropriation adjustment request in the amount of $23.5 million to fund the North Area Streams Levy Improvement Project, contract 4355. The appropriation portion of the um, resolution requires a four-fifths approval of members present to pass resolution. With the 10 members present, that means eight members need to approve to pass the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Pete Kelfie, Director of Engineering. I tried to find a longer title for Lindy to read, but uh, I was unsuccessful. This is uh, the first major construction contract we have with our levy accreditation project. It is along RK Creek and the NEMDEC. Um, as the contract amount shows, it's for about $23.4 million. It involves uh, strengthening about 3.7 miles of levy. Um, we are ready to award, and this action um, allows you to delegate that authority to the executive director to execute the contract with the low bidder, which was Great Lakes um, Nordic. They're a joint venture on this job. 
um, and we are excited about being able to get on the field this year and start strengthening the levees around town. Um, this, pro this project also includes uh, the appropriation to fund this work. It wasn't in the original budget being set up for the fiscal year 16-17. Um, we did sell bonds and those funds are now available for us to use. We just need that appropriation to occur. Director Shaw. Uh, thank you. Is, um, am I correct in reading the table that um, we just got, we only received one responsive bid? Yeah, we were surprised that we only had one responsive bid. Uh, we were for sure going to get a second bid until one of the subcontractors realized they need a California license. And so the prime that was teaming with them didn't know about that until the day of the bids, and so they withdrew their bids. But uh, I think this job is a little challenging. It's in a neighbor, uh, neighborhood. It's, uh, there's a lot of utilities that kind of prohibits it from being a standard slurry wall job where they have long reaches without interruptions. So we think some of the bidders shied away from the complications of that work. That, that makes sense. And um, I just want to be sure that um, if we dug into this much detail when we budgeted for it, is the um, bid amount, is that in line with what we as an agency would estimate estimated that this work would cost? So it was. Um, when we first put the job out to, to bid, um, when they initially developed the plans, they thought it was going to be between 25 and $27 million. Then as we refined the work, uh, the final engineer's estimate was a little over $20 million, and so it came in at 23.4, which is about 13% over the estimate. But we think that it is reasonable. One of the things that we did at the very end of the job and the contractor had to adjust for it is uh, due to um, potential delays in getting real estate from Union Pacific Railroad, we added an extra year for the construction sequence, and then we think that brought up the price a little bit as well. Thank but you. We're hoping that avoids any type of delay claim that we may encounter. So, okay. Any other questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Director Jennings, second by Director Conant. Why don't we do a uh, roll call vote for the four fifths? Thank you. Director Avdis? Yes. Director Brandis? Yes. Director Conan? Yes. Director Hedges? Yes. Director Holloway? Yes. Director Jennings? Yes. Director Kennedy? Aye. Director Peters? Yes. Director Cerna? Cerna? Oh, aye. Director Shaw? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And our remaining item is receive and file. Okay, are there any comments or questions of board members at this time? We're adjourned. Okay, 32 minutes.